The human body is a ridiculously complex biological machine built out of more machines. Tiny, watery blobs more commonly known as cells. Like all machines, cells need a source of power to function. And their main source is a myriad of microscopic batteries called mitochondria. Hence the phrase, mitochondria are the powerhouses of the cell. And when they start to malfunction, things get ugly. The main job of mitochondria inside the cell is to produce energy that powers cellular functions of all sorts. Mitochondrial dysfunction means less energy for our cells and bodies to function. And the troubles don't stop there. Mitochondrial dysfunction has been associated with a number of health problems like diabetes, deafness, blindness, and even neuronal dysfunctions like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. Mitochondria are a bit like cars as they have a bunch of different components and can break in a bunch of different ways. For example, the mitochondrial membrane is basically a double wrap made of fatty molecules that separates the inside of a mitochondrion from the rest of the cell. But that's not its only function. The machinery that produces energy is placed on the inner layer of the membrane and if the molecules that make up the membrane are altered, that can mess up energy production. Also, on the membrane, there is a number of proteins carrying out different functions, such as catching chemical instructions coming from the surrounding environment. If these proteins become damaged, this can impair energy production too. Mitochondria are special in that they have their very own DNA. Unlike your DNA, which is kept in a part of the cell called the nucleus, mitochondrial DNA is inside the mitochondria themselves. They contain the genetic information they need to create some of the proteins they need to work. But as we saw in our episode about genomic instability, DNA can be damaged in a number of ways. And this is also true of mitochondrial DNA. If a uh, mitochondria's DNA is damaged, it may end up producing broken proteins, which winds up affecting energy production and may lead to severe diseases. Cells do have ways to deal with broken mitochondria, but like most things in your body, these ways are not perfect. Take mitophagy and mitochondrial biogenesis, which are processes to recycle broken mitochondria and create fresh ones to replace them. In some circumstances, these processes don't work at full efficiency, such as when a cell stops replicating and switches to low gear due to DNA damage. And the result is that broken mitochondria accumulate with all the trouble that may follow. If and when the cell resumes its cycle, it might find itself with more broken mitochondria than working ones. Both the cell nucleus and mitochondria have DNA repair mechanisms, but the mitochondrial ones are much less effective. And worse, the inside of the mitochondria, where the mitochondrial DNA is stored, is a lot harsher than the inside of the nucleus. Combined, these two things mean that mitochondrial DNA damage is more likely to happen and less likely to be fixed than nuclear DNA damage. For a long time, the blame for mitochondrial damage was placed on free radicals, highly reactive molecules that break other molecules by stealing away electrons from them. Free radicals can definitely cause damage. For example, they can damage mitochondrial DNA. However, free radicals might not be just bad as we used to think. It turns out that in small amounts, they might well be more beneficial than harmful because they might tell the cell to switch to overcompensation mode. There's evidence suggesting that whenever cells undergo a stress of some kind, like 
low levels of oxygen. This leads to the production of free radicals. When free radicals are detected by a cell, it reacts by activating mechanisms to counter the source of the stress. For example, the production of a protein to better adapt to low oxygen levels. This response may go beyond simply fixing the damage, possibly making the cell work better than it did before the damage even occurred. Kind of like a little exam stress that helps you perform better in the test. This is great, but there is a catch. Throughout our lives, our cells are constantly exposed to all kinds of stressors, causing constant production of free radicals. As we've seen, in the short term, this is good, but past a certain threshold, free radicals become a problem in their own right, leading to damage that may surpass the benefits of the repair mechanisms they help trigger, and possibly exacerbating the stressors that they were signaling. Too much exam stress will lead to burnout and a failed grade. Currently, several different options are being explored by researchers to fix problems due to broken mitochondria. For example, the Salk Institute is working on a drug called J147, which is currently in the early stages of human testing. J147 interacts with the energy-producing machinery, making it work more efficiently, which will hopefully compensate for the decrease in energy production that normally results from mitochondrial dysfunction. J147 has been shown to extend the lifespan of fruit flies, and in mice, it appears to make the cells act more youthful. Another potential drug against mitochondrial dysfunction is urolithin A, a molecule that seems to promote mitophagy, the recycling of damaged mitochondria and mitochondrial turnover. In testing, this molecule has been shown to increase the lifespan of worms and the muscle capacity of mice. It has also passed safety trials in humans, but it remains to be seen whether it will be beneficial for us. One of the most ambitious and interesting ways to tackle mitochondrial dysfunction is definitely Sense Research Foundation's MitoSense project. Simply put, the goal of the project is to protect mitochondria from the effects of mitochondrial DNA damage by inserting backup copies of mitochondrial DNA in the cell nucleus, which, as we mentioned, is a much safer environment with better DNA repair mechanisms. In this way, even if the DNA inside the mitochondria is damaged, the backup copies should allow our cells to circumvent the problem. In 2016, a study showing that the procedure was possible was published in the journal Nucleic Acids Research. The scientists showed they were able to successfully make backups of two mitochondrial genes in human cell nuclei and get them to work as they should. The study was funded thanks to a campaign on our crowdfunding platform for aging research, lifespan.io. And in late 2019, the second part of the study was fully funded, and the new goal is to test the technique in live mice. We'll keep you updated on the results. Thank you so much for watching this episode of X10, and thank you for liking and sharing this video. If you have any questions or just want to tell us what you think of the show, please leave a comment below. A special thank you to the Lifespan Heroes, our amazing supporters who allow us to keep going thanks to their donations. If you too would like to help out, you can become a supporter by visiting lifespan.io slash hero and making your pledge. And if you're new around here, please don't forget to visit youtube.com slash lifespan.io and subscribe. On the subject, X10 will soon move to its own channel. You can already find it at the address below, 
but stay tuned for further updates on the official launch date.